Reunited with an old flame, Captain Pike and the Enterprise become embroiled in a conspiracy on an idyllic planet in Star Trek Strange New Worlds' first season sixth episode, Lift Us, Where Suffering Cannot Reach. But what happened? What did I like? And what didn't I like so much? Before I get into this recap and review, please note this video contains spoilers, so if you've not yet seen this episode or any of Strange New Worlds' first season, this might not be the video for you. Let's warp into this. The Enterprise arrives in the Majalan system system on a routine survey mission, a region of space Captain Pike is familiar with having been involved in a rescue mission a decade prior. On the bridge, number one reports a distress call coming from a nearby moon. The Enterprise intercepts, coming to the aid of a non-Federation shuttle which is under attack. On security detail, under Laan's supervision, Cadet Uhura attempts to disable the attacker, but even on a low setting her phaser fire cripples the ship, causing it to crash on the moon's surface. With the shuttle's life support systems failing, Pike orders it its three-person crew be beamed aboard. Arriving at the transporter room, the captain is greeted by one of the passengers, a Majalan woman named Alora, who refers to him as Lieutenant Pike. We return this week to the brisk and snappy cold opens of old. What isn't as short, however, is this week's episode title, which enters rarefied space as the fifth longest episode in Trek history. Typically, I'm not a big fan of long-winded titles, unless your DS9's looking for Parmach in all the wrong places, but on reflection, this couldn't have been titled any more suitably. Pike reacquaints with Alora, introducing her to Una as someone he met 10 years ago during his time in the system. One of the other passengers, Gamal, asks to take the third passenger, an intelligent young boy, to sickbay. Pike asks if the passenger is the boy's father, which he confirms, but curiously adds, only in a biological sense. Alora explains that the boy is about to ascend as her people's first servant, an extremely important figure to the Majalan people, whose motto is science, service, sacrifice. Alora speculates that they were attacked by aliens looking for a ransom and assures Pike that no investigation is necessary, but Pike is bound by regulation to do so. In sickbay, Dr. Mbenga and Chapel attempt to treat the first servant, but Gamal refuses their help, revealing himself and the Majalans as possessing superior medical technology. Gamal reveals disease and suffering have become a thing on the past on his planet, a revelation that piques Mbenga's interest, whose terminally ill daughter remains in stasis in the medical transport. Porter buffer. On the moon's surface, Spock, Leon, Uhura and Alora cut into the hull of the disabled attacker ship. Alora recognises the technology is consistent with that of a nearby colony. In the debris, Spock discovers a small device which Alora says she doesn't recognise. Alora finds a small token, which she later reveals to Pike is an oath coin given to guards sworn to protect the first servant. Pike offers to assist Alora, who suspects a conspiracy on her homeworld. Alora says that her people are private and formal outsiders are not welcome, but Pike counters, offering his services as a friend. With so much time dedicated to this week's A plot, it's surprising the show attempts to include B and C threads focusing on Mbenga's daughter and Uhura's security training. For the most part, I think they pulled it off, with both successfully adding just the right amount of weight to these characters. Mbenga's scenes, particularly with his daughter, worked best for me here, with tight direction and another strong performance from Babs Olasonmakan really selling this as a difficult time for the Doctor. All the talk of suspense suspended time and Rukia's sudden disappearance also evoked strong memories of DS9's The Visitor, feeling very similar to Ben Sisko flashing in and out of Jake's life. Emotional stuff. Pike and Alora beam to the Majalan capital, a city floating high above the planet's surface. Alora meets with the first servant's guard and draws out the owner of the damaged coin, who flees. Pike apprehends the guard, who attacks Alora, proclaiming long live the first servant, but Alora evades, stabbing him with his own blade. In sick bay, Spock visits Gamal and the first servant. Spock shows Gamal the device he found on the attacker's ship, revealing it as a neural dampener designed for the first servant by its size. Gamal says he doesn't recognise the device, but refuses to let the first servant look at it. In the recreation room, La'an approaches Ahura, bringing the cadet a box of data chips taken from the attacker's ship. Recognising her linguistic skills, La'an asks Ahura for her help in decoding and translating the data stored on them. Back in sick bay, Mbenga queries Gamal on the Majala's advanced medical technology, asking if it could be used to treat the illness his daughter suffers from, which Gamal confirms. Mbenga asks if he could send her to Majalis for treatment, but Gamal
Mal says no, stating Majadan law prohibits sharing that technology with outsiders, but curiously confesses wishing for a future alliance between his people and the Federation. Back in the capital, Pike tends to a shaken Allura, who wonders how many more of her people are part of the conspiracy. Pike offers to place guards outside her room for her protection, but Allura refuses, suggesting he come in with her instead. With the exception of a disappointing, low-intensity chase scene that reminded me of that other unintentionally hilarious chase scene from that other space franchise, I love what we got on Majalis. With Strange New Worlds returning to Trek's classic episodic format, there was a concern that its content could be too simplistic, rushing past any potential for richer world building, but I think any lingering concern in that regard can now be put to rest. The aliens of the week here are fleshed out in surprising detail with just the right amount of focus being placed on their world, culture, and customs. It's all just great setup, which I feel adds to the impact of the show's dramatic and complicated conclusion. Pike and Allura spend time together in bed. Pike reveals to Allura knowledge of his future, a doom he fears no Federation medicine will be able to help prevent. Allura offers Pike hope, suggesting he stay with her on Majalis, benefiting from their advanced medical technology. A quick shout out to the show's unexpected breakout star. I'm of course referring to Pike's quiff, which inarguably single-handedly steals the show. Just look at that thing. Pike is summoned back to the Enterprise by Una and Leon, who reveals Uhura's findings from the data chips. The attackers were from a nearby barren world, and judging by their language, must be an offshoot colony of Majalis. From these findings, the crew are suspicious, but Pike is convinced that there is an explanation. Their conversation is then interrupted by Mbenga, who tells the captain Gamal and the first servant are attempting to leave the ship. In the transporter room, Gamal demands to leave, but Chief Carl refuses to beam them down. Pike arrives and attempts to reason with Gamal, insisting the two are safer on the Enterprise, but suddenly a transporter beam activates, beaming Gamal and the first servant off the ship. Una reports that another ship, similar to the attackers, is nearby and is attempting to escape. Gamal suddenly rematerializes on the transporter pad, but the first servant is nowhere to be found. On the bridge, Pike orders a tractor beam which prevents the attackers from escaping. The attackers engage their warp drive system, which Spock warns could destroy the ship. Unwilling to risk the first servant's life, Pike orders the beam disengaged, but it's too late as the strain of the beam causes the ship to explode. One criticism of this week's episode is its pacing, which kind of makes sense given the recontextualizing finale. The world, its people, and the mystery had to be established and given enough time to breathe and take, but I found myself frustrated with a slew of seemingly endless questions and began to spend more energy trying to solve the various mysteries instead of just enjoying the events unfold on screen. It was also around this point that I remembered footage from the show's trailers, which hadn't been seen until this point, which temporarily killed some of the tension the show was aiming for here. Pike informs Allura of the loss of the first servant. Allura is dismayed, fearing their world is doomed with no ascension. Pike is confused by Allura's reaction, asking her why a single child is so crucial, but she abruptly ends the communication. Pike questions Gamal, who fiercely denies putting the first servant in harm but evidence presented by Leanne and Uhura points to the Doctor. Spock then calls Pike to Deck 17 where they discover the First Servant alive and well, having been beamed into a cargo container. The First Servant requests to be returned to his planet to begin his ascension. Invited as a special guest for his role in rescuing the First Servant, Pike joins Allura and her people who celebrate as the ascension ceremony begins. Pike questions Allura over the importance of the First Servant as well as the identity of the attackers as an offshoot group of Majalans. The First Servant then approaches, inviting Pike to join him in the Sacred Chamber. Oh no. I think I know where this is going. On the Enterprise, Una questions Gamal, who admits attempting to use the transporter and neural dampener to hide his son and prevent him from ascending. Una reveals to a devastated Gamal that the First Servant has returned to Majalis for the ceremony. Gamal admits he deserves to be there for attempting to save his son, an admission that confuses Una. Oh no. Now inside the sacred chamber, Pike watches as the First Servant approaches a throne connected to a number of power generators. The first First Servant, now nervous, completes the ascension ritual as Pike inspects a stretcher being carried past him. To his horror, the stretcher contains the charred and lifeless body of a young child, revealed as the First Servant's predecessor. Pike attempts to rescue the First Servant, who is now locked into the throne, hooked in place by a maze of cables, but is knocked unconscious.
unconscious by one of the guards. Pike awakens in Alora's quarters and attempts to go back to rescue the first servant, but Alora stops him, telling the captain the boy will die if he's disconnected. Alora reveals the first servant was created centuries ago, the painful and fatal process the only means to power their civilization. Pike is disgusted, incredulous about the truth of Majalan society, but Alora defends her people, pointing to the Federation's own failings. Alora hopes Pike will come to understand someday, but the captain abruptly calls to the Enterprise and departs. This was all just horrible, and I loved it. A fantastic twist that I honestly didn't see coming right until the show slowly and very cruelly started to reveal its hand. The idea of a society built on the suffering of the few or the one isn't new, with Ursula Le Guin laying the foundations with her 1973 short story, The Ones Who Walk Away From Omelas. This reveal also reminded me, to a lesser extent, of Doctor Who and an early 11th Doctor story, The Beast Below, although that came with a much happier ending than the one we got here. But what makes this such a strong and memorable conclusion was the way the show refuses to view the Majalans through the lens of condemnation. It would have been easy to do so. The suffering of children is a difficult and uncomfortable subject, and the depiction of the first servant, a painfully bright child, being used in such a way by a completely accepting society, is going to stir up a lot of mixed feelings with viewers. And I think that's a good thing. Star Trek is unquestionably at its best when it gives us things to think and feel about. Not explicitly telling us what to think and feel about, but serving up stories that can be analysed on multiple levels and used to start healthy debate that perhaps now more than ever we should be having with ourselves. In Sick Bay, Gamal approaches Mbenga, revealing his plans to shun Majalis in favour of the offshoot colony. Looking to atone for failing to protect his son, Gamal offers to help Mbenga find a cure for his daughter. Alone in his quarters, Pike looks out at the view of Majalis, reflecting on the horror he encountered there. What felt routine at the start slowly morphed into an incredibly complicated and profound story that more than justified its slow build. Fans have been calling for a return to substantive Trek for years, and that's what we got here. A thoughtful episode with a rich build that gave us the classic Trek ethical quandary that puts it right alongside the likes of Enterprise's Dear Doctor, Voyager's Tuvix, and Deep Space Nine's In the Pale Moonlight. It's the kind of episode that will almost certainly divide viewers, but it's also the kind of Star Trek that I didn't think we'd ever see again. A lingering, thought-provoking humanist drama that deftly balances character, action, and a richly realised high-concept sci-fi civilization that truly lives up to the show's title, A Strange New World. I'm giving Lift Us Where Suffering Cannot Reach four and a half stars out of five. But what did you think of this episode? Did you love it? Did you hate it? How would you rate it? Let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more Star Trek reviews, recaps, lore, theories and more coming soon. Until next time, I'm the Trek Lad, live long and prosper.